God is able to resurrect you from death. So the word soul here would have to do with the total personality involved. People can kill you, you're dead, but they cannot kill who you are in your personality. And God is able to raise you from the dead and therefore you're exempt from death in that sense. It doesn't mean you don't die. Everybody dies. If you're killed with a, with a shotgun, you're dead. But God has the power to resurrect you, the real person. So in that sense, you can survive eventually. So the word soul has a slightly different meaning there than the more usual one where you just call it a self, although it ultimately applies to the same sort of concept. God only knows you who you are exactly, and he has the power to resurrect you. But if he's not pleased with you, he can also destroy you, the total self. So the soul is not immortal there. The soul is very much mortal. God is able to destroy it, destroy your whole personality and self. But human beings cannot do that because God is able to resurrect you from the dead and restore your personality and yourself to new life in the future kingdom. Okay, yeah, okay. what's interesting is that Jesus himself debunks the so-called immortal soul by statements like this. Unless, I guess, they would say it's a metaphorical destroying or... Uh, I don't know, uh, you can say anything. Call it a metaphor and a figure of speech. You can get rid of anything you don't want to believe. So the golden rule in Bible interpretation is to take things in the normal, natural, ordinary meaning of words, unless it's obviously a figure of speech. For instance, trees do not literally clap their hands. That's a figure of speech. That's a metaphor. But there's a very great danger for people to say, oh, it's a metaphor. It's a figure of speech. It doesn't really mean that. That's a way of getting rid of stuff you don't want to believe because your system doesn't allow it. Not a figure of speech.